Uma Fight Camp, uh, January 25th, 2018. Got some time on my hands. I'm going to try to get a few videos in. Uh, don't know if I'm going to post them all today, but I have to take advantage of the time that I have so I can uh, at least record the videos. Okay, this one I'm going to talk about, and this one I'm going to answer a question. How did we go from Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu being a self-defense uh, 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 a method to being sport? All right, and uh, this is riding on the heels of uh, the video I posted showing Hicks and Gracie talking about self-defense and the fact that he's a little perturbed by him going to seminars and black belts really not knowing how to defend themselves and how the actual core and the purpose of BJJ was to um, was to uh, 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 deal with self-defense or to make it a strong self-defense. Uh, self-defense method or system or approach. All right, so how did we go from what Hoist Gracie did, which was purely, uh, you can tell that it was based, self based on self-defense. How did we go from what Hoist Gracie was doing uh, in the UFC, in the beginning of the UFC, to where we are now, where people are laying in the guard and, and doing things like that? All right, now I want to say two things before I begin. First, there was an ideological split between Carlos Gracie and Helio Gracie. That is historical, but that's not what we're talking about here. Two, what, we want, what I want you to understand is that what I am saying is not anything that is unusual when it comes down to people who know uh, what Gracie Jiu-Jitsu was formed for. So what I am saying is the same thing that Hickson has said, the same thing that uh, Hoyce has said, and Hickson is so perturbed by things turning to this sport thing or this sport aspect of BJJ that he has developed a a system of scoring in his uh, organization's tournaments where he is now penalizing people who stall for time in the guard without going for a submission and attempting an ex or attempting an escape and he's also um, penalizing people who pull guard when they can get to a more advantageous position. All right, so if you disagree with me, then you're disagreeing with Hoyce and you're disagreeing with Hickson. I'm just putting it out there. There are some people who do think they know more about Gracie Jiu Jitsu than Hoyce Gracie and Hickson Gracie. We have come to that in, uh, at that sad crossroads in martial arts today, but uh, I'm just giving you a heads up as to if you disagree with what I'm saying, what I'm saying, you're disagreeing with the Gracies themselves and the greatest of the Gracies. All right, in particular. All right, so personality. That is the problem. All right, personality is the problem. As you know, one of my pet peeves is psych, psychology, philosophy, psychology, and, and soon I will be launching a, a, uh, a, uh, a, uh, um, a, a channel where I will be dealing with social, uh, social issues in, in the world, in, in America, the UK, wherever. And, uh, you know, looking at them from an intellectual viewpoint and trying to get people to understand that they can do better and should do better. But when we look at psych and I'm applying this, this the, the mind here and how we think and, and how we think about what we think and how we think about what we think when we know we're thinking what we're thinking. The fact of the matter is when you're dealing with celebrity, the onus now becomes on, becomes charisma, right? The focus now is on charisma and not necessarily on uh, the qualifications for someone to call themselves an expert. So what do we have? We had Hoist Gracie, who fought in the UFC. People who weighed maybe 60, 70 pounds more than himself, were taller than themselves, than himself, uh, bare knuckle, right? Um, we come from that to now, we come to the problem of Joe Rogan. Now people might ask, why does Safe always talk about Joe Rogan? And let me explain it here. Because he is a figurehead, he's a figurehead of a movement that is anti-true martial arts. Okay? Joe Rogan is the daddy, is the daddy and the guru of garage martial artists, right, who are hobbyists, who are hobbyists and are not serious martial artists. He is a spokesperson for those people. Whenever you hear someone mention Joe Rogan said this or Joe Rogan said that, you know they are not a serious martial artist. You know they are not a serious martial artist. Now, there are some people who try to be nice and try to get in tight with Dana White, 
All right. So there might be some people who pay Joe Rogan a compliment. But what I am saying, however, is those people who are serious martial artists, they do not have a lot of good things to say about Joe Rogan because he is actually the face of hobbyist martial artists. Why also do I say things that I say about Joe Rogan and single him out? Because he is the figurehead of the biggest MMA organization in the world, all right, which gives him a platform. That platform that he uses is also used to, to spread myths. It's also used to lead people astray. It is a platform that is actually, actually manned by someone whose qualifications are not worthy of that platform. That's why I pick out Joe Rogan. He is a face of everything that I think is wrong with the martial arts today. All right. Now, we went from Hoist Gracie to sport. And as I said, the reason is, is because of celebrity. So now we have this pre, uh, 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 this, um, this, uh, this, this love of celebrity, right? And we elevate them to certain issues or, or we elevate them to certain levels where they are not qualified to be. But then we have the culture. So if we look at the culture, what is the culture? The culture that we're now facing, at least in the United States, the culture that we're now facing is one where it is anti-spiritual. It's almost anti-moral. It's almost hedonistic. So we're not talking about religion. We're talking about hedonistic. It's, you know, do whatever you like to do so long as it feels good to you, right? So we see the legalization of marijuana. Now, I'm not saying that people should be locked away like they're locked away, a majority blacks, for marijuana. I think it's totally unfair that so many blacks have been locked up for the usage of marijuana and yes the selling of marijuana. They are now felons and now since people are trying to legalize marijuana, non-blacks and particularly whites are now going to become rich for the same thing that black people have been locked up for. Not enough is being said about that. I think that it is typical of the laws that are skewed against black people and for and towards non-blacks but the bottom line is now people are going to be rich for things that black people have went to prison for and it's it's actually a shame that this is going to happen because again those black people who get out of prison because their ex-felons will not be able to enter in to the legal marijuana trade so this has been this is a major issue it's skewed i don't like the idea of of um of uh, legalizing marijuana or decriminalizing it however they want to put it because we have enough problems with our youth, we have enough problems in our society without making it easier or, or legal to smoke marijuana. I know people want the taxes and all this other thing, so I'm not going to get into that. But I just think it's a little unfair that black people have gone to prison for what non, and for now, what non-blacks are going to become rich off of. That being a case, that is still now a part of society. So we have the video games, people playing video games, uh, people dropping out of high school, uh, people of all nationalities uh, can't name uh, all of the states. They most of them can't name the senator from their from their country. Uh, there's so many different things going on that you now have people like Joe Rogan who is a pothead. You have then you have um, uh, you have uh, uh, um, uh, Eddie Bravo, right? Who now even to me is a disgrace to the martial arts. He not only uh, uh, wants the legalization of marijuana, which again I'll sit over here. But the thing is, is, is that he will even have the pipe. I even saw one time where someone gave, showed me a video where he had a marijuana pipe, a marijuana pipe on the mat, you know, that he trains on. This is what Brazilian Jiu Jitsu has come to. This is what it has come to. And why? Because one, celebrity, and two, the culture. The culture we now live in is hedonistic. There's almost no spiritual content whatsoever, right? So now what we have done is we have replaced someone like Hicks and Gracie, a warrior, a modern-day samurai, a spiritual individual, a very deep individual, a profound martial artist in, in ability and in psych, right? We have now replaced him with somebody like Eddie Bravo, right? with somebody like Eddie Bravo and Joe Rogan, right? So then what do we have? We have one man who you don't want to hear saying, when you have fear, this is something that's something, something. 
and such and such and such. But for me, it is about this. And when you approach a man, you've gone from that to someone saying, dude, hey, dude, what's up, dude? Oh, dude, man, dude, dude, and dude, it's dude, dude, man, dude, what, dude? You've come from that to that, and you love it. You love it, right? And because you've taken that personality, because you've come from and the mind, when you approach the man and you approach him and you lock up, when you lock up, you catch your breathing, you must go. You've come from that to, dude, whoa, whoo. You've come from that to that. And with that went the seriousness of Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu, right? That's where it went. Celebrity and culture. Whenever you bring celebrity into anything, you change the culture. Whenever you bring celebrity and the onus is on celebrity, what someone is saying, the, the, the personality of someone, whenever you do that, okay, then you are going to suffer in whatever genre you're in. I know people want something a little more than that, but that's what happened. That's what happened. Because I see, I see what has happened. I see it. I see a man kicking a bag and kicking at the ear and people saying, Joe Rogan is the best kicker in the UFC. And what is wrong with this picture? Joe Rogan is not in the UFC. He's not in the UFC at all. There are people who will say, oh man, Joe Rogan is a killer. Joe Rogan, man, if Joe Rogan, Joe Rogan stopped boxing because he was getting headaches. You are really, you've gone from Hicks and Gracie and Hoist Gracie to someone who is no more than a modern day Jean-Claude Van Damme. That's it. That's who you're getting your information from. A modern day Jean-Claude Van Damme. And I can even say it's quite an insult to say that Joe Rogan is a Jean-Claude Van Damme because at least Jean-Claude Van Damme kicked Cody Goldbrandt, I think, called Goldbrandt. I think, I forget how you pronounce his name. At least he kicked him in his face. All right? I mean, at least he did that. But that's what happened. All right? Whenever you bring in personality, and personality means everything to you and not the ability, then everything will suffer. Politics, and we see Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu. Uma Fight Camp, Save Carmen. Train hard, train smart. See you next video.